Welcome to Learn and Love Music. I'm Dwayne Hulbert, your host, and today we're going to look at the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, one of the most wonderful composers who ever lived. His music is evocative, it's lyrical, it has depth, and it also has a message too. There's so many beautiful things about Bach that I love, so I hope you will get to know Bach a little bit better through this episode of Learn and Love Music. Don't forget to subscribe and click like if you like this program. So let's get started. Much of Bach's music came from uh, writing for choral music with and cantatas. Those are pieces with orchestra and choir. But as pianists, we like to take those beautiful themes and put them in piano arrangements. And Ferruccio Bussoni was one of those pianists who wrote, did arrangements of Bach and what's wonderful about these pieces is that what Bach did is he would write a beautiful flowing line that was an accompaniment to a chorale or a tune sort of hidden in the middle of that line. And that's exactly what Bach did in this very famous piece, Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring, because after we hear that opening, we, we hear this tune. This is from the chorus. And here's the flowing line again. And that's what creates this very gentle mood about this piece. And it makes it one of the most popular pieces ever written for the piano, and also one of the most popular pieces written as a cantata, or a piece with choir and orchestra. It's interesting because I'm going to be playing some other pieces, and just by coincidence, well, not by coincidence, but I chose pieces that were all in the key of G major. And I don't know what it is about this key, but it has... It has sort of, sort of a gentle beauty about it, maybe just in the... the quality of the sound we get from that key, and I think Bach liked this key as well. One of the other things that Bach does, and it's sort of similar to Jesu Joy Man's Desiring, he writes pieces that are virtuoso pieces. This is another one called Rejoice Beloved Christians, also has a, a connection to a cantata, and in this one, in this piece, we hear a running line So we hear this running line, and underneath we have the bass line, which sounds like this. And that might be, uh, for example, double basses in an orchestra, or it might be the cellos as well. But the genius of Bach is that he will find a way to put that melody, kind of bury the melody in the middle of all those, all that moving line, those moving lines. So you hear this melody, it's a chorale tune, as many pieces by Bach are. He used a lot of these tunes as part of church hymns, but also composers love to arrange them in uh, arrangements for piano or other instruments just to, to enjoy the way that Bach puts all those parts together. So we'll, let's listen to this piece and hear how the bass line, the running line on the top, and the melody in the middle all sort of blend into one beautiful piece. <laughs> It's very clever. It's actually quite difficult to do, too, because you have to feel like you're an organist sitting at the piano. Because on an organ, organists have the pedal, and they have the keyboard, but also they, they have two keyboards, and they can play one line with each hand plus another line with their feet. 
With pianists, we have to sort of share them between the, the two hands in that way. It's typical of Bach's works, this patterning of how to put voices together. All in G major. Don't ask me why, but here's another one. This is the longest piece that Bach wrote for the piano, or for the harpsichord, actually. A lot of his pieces were written for harpsichord because the piano wasn't invented in, the, in Bach. Well, it was invented toward the end of Bach's life, but he didn't really use the piano at all. So pianists have sort of borrowed all of his works to play. In this one, this is called Aria with 30 Variations, called the Goldberg Variations. If you play it from beginning to end, it's about 50 minutes long. But in this piece, there's a beautiful aria at the beginning of, the, of it as a theme. It sets the tone for the rest of the piece. It sounds like this. piece and he takes that one melody and he creates all these different variations so uh, for example I'll do I'll show you one of the variations of the 30 of them total from beginning to end but he'll take that idea beautifully shaped lines, all based on this theme. Always in G major. And next we're going to look at one of Bach's suites. Bach wrote a number of pieces that were in suites, which would be dance suites. Um, we have usually an Aleman, which is a, uh, a heavier kind of dance, and then a lighter dance called the Courant. He also does a sarabande, a slow dance. So he wrote several sets of these, always in sets of six. Each, um, the, the French suites are the, kind of the easier ones, the lighter ones. There's also some English suites, which are a little heavier touch. And also partitas are longer and more complex. I like the French suites because they have a kind of a lighter, almost, uh, even though they call them French, they have almost an Italian character because of the lightness and character, uh, lightness and touch. And he uses a lot of ornamentation, but most importantly, he uses these dances, these Baroque dances. And one of the things about the Aleman, it usually has this feel like step, step, flow, step, step, flow. So we hear in this piece, step, step, flow. is there it's taken from the Baroque dance which is done with a partner a, usually a woman and a man work dancing together and there's there's a wonderful rhythmic feel to th this music and of course each movement of the French suite has a different character the next the courant has a lighter <laughs> character to it, and the beautiful Sarabon, which is much slower and very stately with ornaments. In three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Imagine dancing very elegantly across the ballroom to that beautiful music. And each dance is a different character. The one that's sort of the most fun is the very last one. It's called a jig, or a jig, I guess you'd call that. A faster piece that shows off technique a little bit more. And in this one, Bach uses the, the 
it uses it almost like a fugue. A fugue has a voice, which would be something, a first voice that comes in by itself. And later on you'll have a, the left hand will have. You put them together and you get this fugue subject, but it's not exactly a fugue because it's really a gigue or a dance. So let's put that all together. This is the last movement of the French suite in G major. piece I'm going to play by Bach is a minuet. It's actually three minuets, but unlike the other pieces, this is an arrangement done in the 1920s by a man named Egon Petri, and he was a professor. He was a, a pianist and professional pianist and composer, and he lived in Germany but left Germany during World War II. He got out before the Holocaust and uh, settled eventually in the Bay Area of California and uh, he worked at Berkeley, uh, University of California, Berkeley. And he happened to be the teacher of one of my teachers and my teacher gave me this piece and it was an arrangement about Egon Petri and it was a piece that takes three minuets of Bach and puts them all together in a very beautiful way. Once again, G major, but you'll notice in this, piece, in this piece we're going to be doing, the middle movement is going to be a G minor uh, minuet rather than major, and then we'll come back at the end with a third minuet that's in G major. But it's a lovely piece. Even though it was written by Bach, there's some interesting harmonies in here that Mr. Petri used to try to create a beautiful lyricism in this music. So I'm going to just show you what this sounds like, I'll introduce each one of the different three different themes. So here is the three minuets by J.S. Bach as arranged by Egon Petri.
Thank you for joining me today on Learn and Love Music as we explored some of the most beautiful music written by Johann Sebastian Bach, all in the key of G major. So I hope to see you next time on Learn and Love Music.